Hey everyone, what's going on? Yesterday, we found out who was going to be in Super Bowl 53. It's going to be the Patriots versus the Rams. And if you've been following my channel, what I talk about is how our sports leagues are scripted by ancient knowledge systems, ancient knowledge things, such as Hermeticism, Astrology, also what is called Kabbalah, which within Kabbalah, there's a belief that God created the world by merging the letter with the number. It's Jewish mysticism, and it has gematria that is involved in it, which is the practice of coding numbers into words and phrases. And if you study this and you follow the pattern, you'll see how our mainstream media is all synced up to the sports leagues, and the sports leagues are scripted to the mainstream media. Our, our told history is scripted this way. It syncs up to biblical history as well. And a major thing that I was talking about with all of this was how the Rams are important because the Rams in biblical history, that is important to Moses. Moses brought in the age of Aries in astrology, and Aries is the Ram. And that's why Colin Kaepernick is still important in the kneeling stuff in San Francisco because San Francisco plays in Levi's Stadium, and Moses was in the tribe of Levi. And the Kansas City Chiefs, they play in the Sea of Red. And they're also connected because Alex Smith went to the Kansas City Chiefs because of Colin Kaepernick. And I also mentioned how the Nebraska Cornhuskers are important because they also play in the Sea of Red. And just think about what's been going on in the mainstream media as of late, too. We got the story about the Covington High School, right? And they supposedly disrespected this Native American who was also an Omaha Native American, something I have been talking about like crazy. But it was at the Lincoln Memorial, and the Nebraska Cornhuskers just so happened to play in Lincoln. And the, their stadium is actually called Memorial Stadium. So Lincoln Memorial, we're getting the story, you know, right around the same time that we got these, you know, NFL championship games. And I mentioned all of this in some of these videos. These last few videos that I did, I talked about why it's important to Donald Trump and the wall. And the same day we got the Donald Trump story. We got a story about Chris Jericho signing with a different wrestling league and the walls of Jericho. Just think about it. And he was all synced up to the day that Donald Trump won the election on the anniversary of the Berlin Wall being announced that it was going to come down. The guy who wants to build the wall. When Moses brought the Israelites out of slavery, he led them to Canaan. And then Joshua took over. And, you know, they killed all of the Canaanites and whatever else. You know, God told them to kill everybody. But, you know, that's when the walls of Jericho came down. It's all by the numbers. And they even blow, you know, they have seven priests walk around it for six days. And then on the seventh day, they walk around it seven times, blowing seven ram's horns, which are also the trumpets. Think about Trump and Pence and the trumpets. Also, think about the story here about you know, these kids supposedly, whatever, disrespecting this Native American guy. They're now telling us that it all began because there was a bunch of African Americans sitting outside talking smack to him or whatever, and they identify as the true Hebrew Israelites. What are the odds of that? He, you know, they're identi they identify as members of of the Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites, you know, like the, the people that Moses led to the land of Canaan, where they took down the walls of Jericho. Donald Trump wants to build the wall. It's really big in the mainstream media right now. That's why we are getting this story the same time that we have these scripted sports games and the Rams absolutely rigged to go on to the Super Bowl. And 
I'm going to continue, but there's a, there's a bunch more here. But if you notice in both of these games, the the player who won the game had a connection to Lincoln, Nebraska. Greg Zerloin, or Zerloin, however you pronounce his name, the kicker for the Rams who made the 57-yard field goal. And if you notice in Gematria, Rams equal 57. And he made the 57-yarder to send the Rams to the Super Bowl. But notice, he is from Lincoln, Nebraska. What are the odds of that? He's from Lincoln, Nebraska. In my previous video, I talked all about this. So just just I'll, just bear with me here. This guy's from Lincoln, Nebraska. If you watch the Patriots and the Chiefs game, the guy who made the winning touchdown in overtime was Rex Burkhead, who was a former player who played for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And he also wears number 34. I don't know what happened there, but he wears number 34. And if you go back to my my last video where I talked about this, I talked all about the number 34 how it was synced up, the word Lincoln equals 34. Lincoln freed the slaves just like Moses freed the slaves. And, you know, Exodus equals 34, Serpent, Red Sea, Canaan, Sinai, Passover, Ares, which is the ram. Golden Calf equals 43, the reflection. Much, much more, you know. I mentioned all about the stubborn 34, how it syncs up to Nebraska, and... There you go, you know, the two players who win the game have this connection to Nebraska. I also mentioned how the Chiefs game, it, the Chiefs and Patriots game, while the game was going on, was the beginning of the total lunar eclipse, which is also a blood red moon, a red moon in the Kansas City Chiefs, but it's also called a blood wolf moon in the Kansas City Chiefs mascot just so happens to be a wolf, KC Wolf. And Tom Brady is also really synced up to this wolf symbolism. He even played for the Michigan Wolverines, right? It's not the same as a wolf, but it has, you know, wolf right in it. And let's look at Tom Brady and Gematria. He's all synced up to this. Tom Brady, 98. Look at New England Patriots equal. New England Patriots. Spelled it wrong, but it's all the right letters. New England Patriots. 98, he played for the Michigan Wolverines, that equal 98 in Gematria. He became the starter at Michigan in the year 1998. That's also why right now Michigan's coach is uh, Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh equals 98, coaches the Michigan Wolverines. His name also equals 64, just like Michigan. If you just write Michigan out, equals 64. And if you write out 98 as words, 98 equals 64. And Think about Jim Harbaugh, who was the coach of Colin Kaepernick in Super Bowl forty-seven that they should have won. There's also this ancient Roman festival called Lupercalia that begins on February 13th. Lupercalia, that equals 98, and it's about the celebration and sacrifice of a wolf. I didn't realize it equaled 64 either, but, you know, Lupercalia syncs up to this wolf festival, and... In 2015, a big thing that I talked about was during the NBA All-Star Week, we had, it began on Lupercalia, and then it, Lupercalia lasts three days. It goes from February 13th, 14th, and 15th. And in 2015, in the NBA All-Star Game, or All-Star Week, we had Andrew Wiggins, who was a teen wolf at the time. He was a teenager, and he played for the Minnesota Timberwolves. He won the Rising Star Challenge MVP. And then the very next night, his teammate, Zach Levine, who was also a teen wolf, won the Slam Dunk Contest doing the Michael Jordan Space Jam Dunk. And then, of course, I talked about how it was synced up to the Gold State Warriors who went on to win the NBA Finals 122 days later, and Golden State equals 122. But... In the All-Star game, we had Russell Westbrook win the MVP of that. And Russell Westbrook played for UCLA. Zach Levine, the Teen Wolf, played for UCLA. And the reason Andrew Wiggins became a Teen Wolf was because he got traded for Kevin Love, who also played at UCLA. And I started looking into 
you know, wolf stuff. And I thought, oh, I bet the movie Teen Wolf has something important to it. And I looked into this movie and I noticed there was Nebraska Cornhusker stuff all throughout this movie. Husker power. There's a cow litter in the background of Nebraska Cornhuskers. There's a Nebraska license plate. And when he becomes the wolf, he joins the, the school play about the Civil War, right? Reminding us of Lincoln, Lincoln, Nebraska. And, you know, later that year, Nebraska got a new football coach. And it was Mike Riley who came from Oregon State. And if you look up in this movie, the, the team is the Beavers. And they say that it is based off of the Oregon State Beavers. And then Nebraska gets their coach, Mike Riley, who comes from Oregon State, just after all this Teen Wolf stuff happens. They had a terrible record, and they ended up getting a bowl game with a 5-7 and seven record, and they just so happened to play UCLA in the Foster Farms Bowl that was held in Levi's Stadium, right? That was synced up to Colin Kaepernick and also the Rams and Moses and Nebraska plays in the Sea of Red, and Moses parted the Red Sea. It's also why this year, Nebraska had a terrible season, UCLA had a terrible season, and also Oregon State had a terrible season in football. Also, UCLA's coach right now is Chip Kelly, and Chip Kelly was the coach of the San Francisco 49ers when Colin Kaepernick originally knelt in Levi's Stadium. And Nebraska's coach, Scott Frost, just so happened to coach underneath Chip Kelly when they coached at, both coached at Oregon. Also, think about how the moon is important in regards to werewolves, right? A werewolf becomes a werewolf when there's a full moon. Also, you know, you think about wolves and howling at the moon. The same day, yesterday, when we got these football games, we had the, I don't know if I pulled it up or not, the same day that we had these football games, we had the Minnesota Timberwolves beat the Phoenix Suns. And think about how, you know, the wolves and it's the wolf moon and then they beat the Suns, a lot like the moon versus the sun. But... This game is really important. The, the Timberwolves had 116 points, and if you write out Teen Wolf in Gematria, it equals 116. Just if, And if you write out T-Wolves, it equals 116. And Michael J. Fox, who is the Teen Wolf, his birthday is 160, 16 days after Lupercalia begins. He's also age 57 right now, and the word moon just so happens to equal 57. And think about how the Rams made the Super Bowl on a 57-yard field goal, and Rams equal 57, right? Rams equal 57. Moon equals 57. Michael J. Fox is 57 years old right now. All of this happens the same day we get the story of the Timberwolves beating the Phoenix Suns, synced up to Teen Wolf. And also in 2015, when all that Teen Wolf stuff was going on, just... On the 56th day of the year, I believe it was, Kevin Garnett came back. Just after all that stuff went on, Kevin Garnett got traded back to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Kevin Garnett, the original Teen Wolf. What are the odds of that, you know? And then Flip Saunders died, right? The coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves. And now the Timberwolves this year fire Tom Thibodeau. And the coach for the Timberwolves right now just sounds to be Flip Saunders' son. And once again, think about why that's important that they're playing the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix was also a really perfect team because Phoenix Suns and Gematria equals 56, just like the word wolf. Just like Scott Howard equals 56. That's what the name of the teen wolf is in the movie. His name's Scott Howard. Michael J. Fox equals 56. Kevin Garnett equals 56, the original teen wolf. Flip Saunders died five months and six days after Kevin Garnett's birthday. And I know absolutely that they're, they're doing this theme. Is Just the other day, we got a story about Michael J. Fox getting his first tattoo. Michael J. Fox. And 
you know, they put it right below this big deal about Colin Kaepernick, of all, all things, right? The main story, Colin Kaepernick, and then right below it, they put a story about Michael J. Fox getting his first tattoo. And, you know, he did it seven months and one day after his birthday. The word tattoo equals 71. If you write out first tattoo, it equals 71. Moses equals 71. The Ten Commandments equals 71. Nebraska equals 71. This year, the college football championship that Clemson won was in Levi's Stadium on January 7th, which in most parts of the world, they write it as 7 slash 1. Or it could be 1 7. Moses, the small way, equals 17. YouTube in December even gave me a copyright claim on one of my videos about Teen Wolf. And they just so happened to do it 64 days after the anniversary of me putting that video out. And then they also did it 56 days before Lupercalia begins. What are the odds of that? 56 days before Lupercalia, the word wolf, and so on. And it's all about Teen Wolf. But Lupercalia does it, it equals 64. Moses also equals 64 in the reverse method. 49ers equals 64. That's why earlier this year we got the death of Dwight Clark on 6-4. And, you know, of course, he died in Montana, and he was famous for the catch with Joe Montana. And that was the game that Tom Brady went to when he was a kid because he's from the San Francisco Bay Area, right? Also, in regards to Moses, if you remember, just before Flip Saunders died, we got the death of Moses Malone, the basketball player, who was the first player to go out of high school into the ABA. Then just after that, we got the death of Daryl Dawkins, who was the first player out of high school to go into the NBA. And then we had Kevin Garnett, the original Teen Wolf, who came out of high school to go into the NBA. He went back to the Minnesota Timberwolves earlier that year, and then Flip Saunders died. So, let's transition this video here. So, the Super Bowl this year is going to be played in Atlanta, which, you know, it stems back to Atlantis, the lost city, right? And Michael J. Fox just so happens to be the voice of the main character, Milo, in the film Atlantis. You know, what are the odds of that? And the reason that that's important is because this movie... It came out on June 3rd of 2001, which was 100 days before 9-11 happened in 2001. And if you read out Teen Wolf, I'll just show you here. Teen Wolf, it equals 116, but it also equals 100. Also think about how both of the games went to overtime. Both of the championship games went to overtime. Remember, the only time the Super Bowl has went to overtime was when the Patriots came back against the Atlanta Falcons and the absolutely rigged Super Bowl, Super Bowl 51, right? It's the only time they went to overtime. It was all synced up. That's why Lady Gaga did the halftime show because of her one song where she puts her two fingers over her eye and she does, she says, Ra, Ra, La, 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 because she's singing about Ra, the Egyptian god. He's the Egyptian god who had the head of the falcon. Let's put it in here really quick for you. The Egyptian god with the head of the falcon. And, you know, that's what this represents. It's the falcon's eyeball with the teardrop. And, you know, that Super Bowl, Super Bowl 51, the game was played on 2-5, February 5th. And Falcons equal 25. Remember, the Patriots came back down 25 points. And Matt Ryan fumbled the ball on the 25-yard line. You know, and it was picked up by... What, number 97 of the Patriots? And the 25th prime number is 97. It was the 97th season of the NFL. Tom Brady got his 25th playoff win. The AFC got the their 25th Super Bowl win. Even the winning score was by James White, number 25 of the Patriots, who just turned 25 years old. He wins the game on 2-5 in the 25-point comeback against the Falcons that equal 25. Every Super Bowl is scripted exactly like this. I don't even know what James White equals. I can't even remember. His name equals 40 would, just like Super Bowl, you know. Also, just the word White equals 25, you know. 
What are the odds of all that? Another thing that was interesting in regards to the Super Bowl against Atlanta, Super Bowl 51 here, the Patriots won with 34 points, and it was Tom Brady's 34th playoff game ever. He played 30, it was his 34th playoff game. They won with 34 points. This is interesting because this year, the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 53, it happens to fall on the 34th day of the year, February 3rd. And the reason I brought all that stuff up with Atlantis and Atlanta is because the Patriots are playing the Rams again. And the last time that they played each other was just after 9-11 happened, right? 9-11 in 2001. The Super Bowl 2001 also was on the 34th day of the year. And the only Super Bowl that the Rams have ever won was Super Bowl 34, right? The only one that they've won was Super Bowl 34. And that Super Bowl just so happened to be in Atlanta. So just think about all the stuff with Nebraska that I was talking about in the beginning of the video. That's why it's important that Rex Burkhead, number 34 of the Patriots, Scored the winning touchdown. Lincoln equals 34. The word flag equals 34 as well. And the flag is really important to the symbolism that has been going on. Even in Gematria, the word Rex equals 34. And also Burkhead equals 34. He played for Lincoln. You know, he played in Lincoln equals 34. Where's number 34 now for the Patriots? What else is interesting that I just found out yesterday or last night, someone was talking about how, I think it was the day before, the Fordham Rams lost to the George Mason Patriots in basketball. And the reason that's significant is because Donald Trump attended Fordham University, which is a Jesuit university, which is important to the Blood Moon stuff. You know, Pope Francis, when he visited the United States, he left the United States on the same night that we got that blood moon, the fourth of blood moon of the Tetrad, right? And I'll leave a link in the description. It'll take way too long to re-explain it. But I talked about a lot of this before, how the moon is really important. And that's why we got the Kim Jong-un meeting or the, the wall speech on the same day as Chris Jericho signing with someone else. And it was also Kim Jong-un's birthday. And now Donald Trump is going to have a second meeting with Kim Jong-un. But another reason that it's important to the Rams, the Fordham Rams, they are the team that the owner of the Los Angeles Rams, that's where they got their name. It's because his favorite football team was the Fordham Rams. And the Fordham Rams also just so happened to be the team who played in the first ever televised football game. And they won with 34 points. And Fordham in Gematria equals 34. Vince Lombardi, Lombardi, you know who the Super Bowl trophy comes from? He also played for the Fordham Rams. There's also just a ton of other things that are interesting with this. If you write out Pope Francis, it equals 68. If you write out Donald John Trump, it equals 68. If you write out the word Catholic, it equals 71. Just like Moses, just like the Ten Commandments, just like Nebraska, and so on. And... You know, the record for Fordham became 9-9. Nine and nine. It's the 99th season of the NFL. And the George Mason Patriots became 11-8. and eight. I mean, what are the odds of that? 11-8? and eight. If you go back and look, look at New England Patriots again. Well, not New England, just Patriots. Patriots, 118. Also 98. The New England Patriots equal 98. I didn't even point that out earlier, but Patriots equal 118. That's also why I documented just before the game started yesterday. Tech 9, the Kansas City rapper. Let's find it here. Tech 9. He came out with this new song. In a, as a tribute for the Kansas City Chiefs for this AFC Championship game. And it was called Red Kingdom. And if you look up his birthday, it's November 8th, a lot like 118. And he released this song on January 18th. 
a lot like 118. And, you know, Patriots equal 118. He's born on 11-8, but he releases this song on on 1-8 or 118, a lot like 118. And the song is called Red Kingdom. That equals 170 and 53. And he released it 71 days after his birthday. If you write out Super Bowl L-I-I-I, or whatever, the three I's, it equals 71, 170, just like Red Kingdom, and it's Super Bowl 53, right? Or you see how it syncs up here. Red Kingdom, 170 and 53, 71 days after his birthday. Super Bowl L-I-I-I equals 71 and 170. And Moon also equals 170 in Gematria. Moon also equals 210 in another form called English Extended. I noticed it was also two months and ten days after Tech Nine's birthday. Tech Nine in Gematria equals 120. This game was played on January 20th. The word Eclipse equals 120. Moses supposedly died at the age of 120. It's also Buzz Aldrin's birthday. You know, the guy who landed on the moon with Neil Armstrong. I mean, there's nothing that lined up for the Chiefs with this. It lined up to the Patriots because of his birthday. And then it was synced up to Super Bowl 53. But whatever, I didn't take the time to make a video. And I don't really care, you know. I'm not trying to make a bunch of picks because I just see this narrative, you know. I knew... The Chiefs were probably showing me the Rams because that was the bigger theme that is important. And, you know, you just keep studying this over and over. Eventually, we'll be able to figure it out all before it comes out. But there's a whole lot that goes along with it and a lot of interrelated things. And I'm not here to, you know, make people money. I'm not here to make myself money. I'm just here to figure out the truth of this world and, you know, figure out what is truly going on in this world. And, you know, I used to I used to make some picks, but it seemed like I was wrong a lot of times. But the narrative that I was talking about still existed. So, you know, I just don't care who wins the game. It's truly irrelevant because these sports leagues are important to other events that are going on that they're putting in front of us. You know, that's the more important thing. It's not about who wins the game. It is about, you know, what is to come. You know, we don't. I want to be able to figure that out so we can stop certain events, you know, so a bunch of people don't die or this or that, you know, or maybe we can just make this world a better place by understanding this knowledge. So anyway, let's go back and look at the, the end of this game here. So there's all kinds of stuff that goes along with this. So the, you know, the, the Chiefs were looking like they were going to lose. They got they got the ball back with 39 seconds left, and then they made the 39-yard field goal to tie the game at 31. But when they started with 39, and then they kicked it off, and their, so their drive started on the 31-yard line. And in Gematria, Chiefs equal 31. So let's just look at this. Chiefs. Chiefs equal 31, also 32. If you notice, there was 32 seconds when they started that drive. They started on the 31-yard line. They drove the ball all the way down, and they ended up making the score 31 to 31, and the kick was at 11 seconds even. 11, the 11th prime number just so happens to be 31, so... 11 seconds left on the clock. He kicks the ball, makes the score 31 to 31. Chiefs equal 31. They started that drive on the 31-yard line. What are the odds, you know? The actual, they got the ball back with 39 seconds left. They kicked the 39-yard field goal. And think about Moses in regards to the Old Testament and the 39 books of the Old Testament. Mahomes also only threw 31 pass attempts in the game. But then the Patriots come back in overtime and they win the game, right? And they win with 37 points. Once again, look at Patriots here. Patriots equal 37. And they won with 37 points. And I timed it when the eclipse began. I had this little calendar or this countdown thing up. And 
you know, the eclipse began at 8.36 and 29 seconds. And when the Patriots scored the winning touchdown, it was at 9.14 and 18 seconds. So they scored their 37th point to win the game in the 37th minute of the eclipse beginning. And Patriots and Gematria equals 37. So we'll leave the video there. Hopefully that all makes sense. I need to do some more research into Aries and, you know, why it's important. The Mormons are really important to all of us too. And that's a lot to do with why this story about the the kid at the, the high school and the Native American, and he's the Omaha guy, the Omaha Native American. So he's the Omaha people that signed an illegal treaty and they brought the Mormons to the Omaha area because they thought they were going to get protection from the Sioux. And Andy Reid of the Chiefs is a Mormon, and Alex Smith went to the school in Utah. And the Mormons also believe that the, what is it, the ancient Israelites or whatever, they came to America from up until the year 421 or whatever. I can't remember what it is. Let me look really quick. Book of Mormon. Yeah, they, they the ancient prophets who lived on the American continent from 2200 BC to 421 AD. And this is really important to Lupercalia as well because Lupercalia is, it's in honor of the she-wolf who suckled Romulus and Remus, who, you know, founded Rome. And they supposedly founded Rome on April 21st, 421. And 421 is Queen Elizabeth's birthday. And, you know, this royal family stuff is really important. That's why just after Trump won the election, we got the closest supermoon since the year 48 on Prince Charles's birthday. Also, the Book of Mormon has 239 chapters, and Pope Francis visited the United States in the 239th year of the United States, and he went to the White House on 23-9. Donald Trump called out the kneeling on 23-9. That's why they told us he weighed 239 pounds last year before the Super Bowl. And the Eagles won the Super Bowl because the flag was sewn at 239 Arch Street in Philadelphia. And that's why Atlanta is important too, because Atlanta Falcons equal 239. And that's why the, be the beginning game of the season was the Falcons and the Eagles. And the score was 18 to 12, because during the War of 1812, the National Anthem was written by Francis Scott Key. And the War of 1812 was really important to the Native Americans, right? And think about the Kansas City Chiefs with that. And the Mormons believe that the Lamanites, there was the Nephites and the Lamanites, and the Lamanites were the ones who broke away from God, and they're the, the actual Native Americans that live here or whatever. They're the Lamanites. So it's really important to to the Mormons. There's a lot more that goes along to it. What else was I going to talk about really quick? Donald Trump was born on the same day as a blood moon in 1946, and he's born on Flag Day of all days, the guy who calls out the kneeling during the National Anthem. Also, in regards to 9-11, so the last time... The page, you know, Tom Brady began his career beating the Rams just after 9 11, and they had the Patriot Act, and the Patriots won the Super Bowl against the Rams. But during the Rams game, they kept doing this ad online. I don't know if they did it on TV, but when I was watching it on Fox on my computer, they kept showing this like ad for full measure, and they kept talking about how 9 11 was. Do you feel safer after 15 years? And I'm like, what is that, how does that make sense to this year? 9-11 was more than 15 years ago. So, you know, I don't know. Rams equal 15 in Gematria. But I, was, I pointed this out before the Patriots played the Chiefs because it was interesting, you know. And they kept doing this 9-11 symbolism. And if you go back and watch my videos over the summer, I talked a lot about 9-11 symbolism and 
how it was synced up to the baseball season. And even like Ichiro Suzuki, you said he didn't know who Tom Brady was. And you remember that he played for the Mariners, and the Mariners were the team the New York Yankees upset just after 9-11. It was 41 days after 9-11, and Al-Qaeda equals 41, and 9-11 has a date named Virology of 41, and, you know, it was on Ichiro's birthday even, and then Tom Brady came out of nowhere, now Tom Brady's 41 years old, the word Super Bowl equals 41, and the reason it's important is because Aries is ruled by Mars in astrology, and Mars is the god of war. Abraham Lincoln and died during the time of Aries and the Zodiac, and the Civil War also began during the time of Aries, and Moses possibly was born and died during the age of Aries. So, I don't know. It, it might not be, but it, it's sometime really close to that, according to whatever. I don't know the exact date of when it started clear back in the day, but, you know, he died in what would have been March, so it could have been right around the time of the age of or of Aries. And it's just interesting. I recently had mentioned this movie. Oh, the movie called Black Sunday. Because we had the death of the 72 Miami Dolphin player. And that team was synced up to Elvis in Hawaii. And there, there's just a whole bunch of stuff that goes along with it. It's, it'll take me way too long to, to re-explain. But this movie Black Sunday is about, you know, a, a, an attack at the Super Bowl. And I have a feeling that's why it's important that we got this. There's a lot to explain. I There really is. I, I should make a separate video on it, but I probably won't. But I remembered that on 9-11 of 2001, I just, for whatever the reason, I this, this is the only album. I, I worked at a radio station and they had an, ad for this this uh album of pod the band pod coming out and it was called satellite right think about the moon the moon is the earth's satellite but i looked up their song called boom that got banned just after 9 11 and their album satellite came out on 9 11 of 2001 and they do this weird video and they they do it in a stadium and they have a blimp up here like and they show it multiple times, you know, the blimp in the background in the stadium where they're playing ping pong or whatever. So there's a lot more to explain to it. But Quentin Tarantino, he, uh, part of his movie was like a tribute. One of his movies with Daryl Hannah was a tribute to this movie. And the reason that's important is because Daryl Hannah, uh, just recently, or she's married to Neil Young, right? Think about Neil Young and Harvest Moon. And Neil Young's ex-wife just recently died. So, Daryl Hannah's important to you know, so. I don't know. You can come read this post. Just look up 72 Dolphins. Before I even knew about Gematria, that's why I'd, tonight I just covered a lot of the storyline. In 2013, you know, I just, I would watch the media, though. And I would just notice these patterns that would go on in the media, and I knew there was something to it. Like, in August of 2013, we got a story about a new star in the Delphinus constellation, and Delphinus is the dolphin. And then just a few days later, we got a story about 200 and some dolphins dying on the East Coast. And a few days later, we got a story of the 72 dolphins visiting the White House for the first time. You know, the 72 dolphins, this is all like in like a, you know, a couple weeks span. We got these stories about dolphins. And it was interesting because the 72 dolphins visited the White House 72 days before Richie Incognito got suspended for bullying Jonathan Martin. And the word bully equals 72 in Gematria. So I always knew there was something important to that. Because I, I knew there was something important to numbers, and it was 72 days later, that the, after the 72 dolphins went, and then I learned Gematria, and I found out the word bully equals 72, and I said, oh, it makes so much more sense now, you know? Just adds even more to the narrative. But, yeah.
there were, I know I'm keep rambling, but there was also a, another Nebraska Cornhusker thing in the Rams and Saints game. They kept putting in Tyson Hill. And I had no idea this guy even played there. You know, I don't, I haven't really watched any football games all year. I mean, maybe a couple foot, football games, you know. And I heard Tyson Hill and I thought, what in the world? Because I made a whole video that was connected to this guy in 2015. I had a video about the game where Nebraska lost on a Hail Mary to BYU, the Mormon school where Tyson Hill went. And he got hurt in that game, and it was all about the number 34. And Sam Foltz, the Nebraska punter who later died, and it was all synced up to Lawrence Phillips dying the same day Obama came to Omaha, Nebraska. But, uh, yeah, Sam Foltz was number 34, and the only person that helped him when he got hurt was number – was or he kicked a 34-yard punt, and he got hurt. And number 34, Terrell Newby, was the only player trying to help him. And then Terrell Newby was the, you know, the leading rusher and just a ton of other stuff with 34. Tyson Hill actually got hurt in that game. And then Tanner Mangum came in and threw the Hail Mary pass to win the game. And it was just, the whole game was just scripted by the numbers. It was crazy. So I just thought it was interesting that he played for the New Orleans Saints. And then we had the, you know, the guy from Lincoln, Nebraska, go on to win the game. So we'll leave it there. Hopefully that makes sense. There's a huge narrative that is going on though. So have a good one. Peace.